are going to talk to the umpires. You know, both of these sides to the right and to the left, they got to mark what's in play and what's out of play. I know if you're seeing on our cameras, you can't see it right now, but you can see on the left and to the right, you're going to see lots of green brush, and you're going to have to keep that ball in from going out of play. And so you're going to have to watch where that is, but both umpires going through it, and then both teams just kind of waiting to see what will happen. Thank you guys for joining us again and here on NCTV. We're trying to do our best, but we apologize for some technical difficulties that we may have. We had a couple recently, but we had some just a few moments ago, but hopefully we don't have any for the rest of the game. Yeah, like you were saying, the dimensions of this field are very large. Um, it's not quite the Oakland Coliseum, but to left field and um, right field, there are definitely some you know, big corners for those out, corner outfielders to run. And you also have that tree in center field, right, which isn't talked about as much as it probably should be. But they had some debate on whether or not they were going to get rid of that tree. But they do have that tree out in center field. Yeah, a lot of um, almost every major league field at this point doesn't have any objects in center field. We saw in the old Texas Rangers park, they had a hill up in center field with a pole in it. Saw a lot of center fielders fall out there, but hopefully we don't see any collisions in that tree in center field. And we're going to be here. We're going to be here. We'll be back to you in just a few short minutes. But we have the national anthem coming up and then the starting lineups. And then we'll go through the starting lineups one more time. But here is the national anthem. Again, if you are just joining us here on NCTV 78 on YouTube, thank you for joining us here at Mead Park for some high school baseball where today the New Canaan Rams, who are 2-0, host the West Hill Viking, coming with record of 3-1. And, and thank you for joining us. Again, myself, John Friedrich, joined alongside Henry Lapin. We had a couple technical difficulties just a few moments ago. The national anthem was rung and or was sung. And then now we, we're going to have the starting lineups, but things are going to get going quickly here. On a day where it's 73 degrees outside, that can't be mentioned enough. After a week of rain last week, you come in with a day where it's 73 degrees outside. Perfect for some high school baseball in the spring. And man, am I excited. Henry, what are we going to see today? You mentioned right now Aiden Gray is on the mound for the Rams. And up first for the Vikings will be number three, uh, Armand, Armando Quito, who's the center fielder, so definitely lots of speed. You're going to have to watch him as the leadoff threat, but what are you expecting today, Henry? Uh, I'm going to expect a lot of ground balls from both pitchers. Both of these guys, uh, I think they're going to like to go uh, low in the zone, induce these ground balls, trust their defense behind them. Both these teams we know have, are great defensively, and I think we're going to see that today. Yeah, and again, this is the Rams' third game on the season, so Coach Boss definitely mentioned they haven't been perfect so far this season, and they're still going to be ball one. We start off with a 1-0 count. Yeah, Mondo Keto with the ball. Aiden Gray is going to try to attack these hitters up and inside with that heat. Here's the second pitch. That one's up and in. Again, missing at the same pot spot as that first pitch. He finds himself down 2-0. Armando Keto up 2-0 in the count. Two balls to start the game off from Gray. Yeah, I think the outer half of the plate could be open here. We'll see if he uses it. And he throws the first one right in there. That's a strike. There's the strike. It puts him up. Now two balls, one strike. Armando Quito looking for something here, but some gas from Aiden Gray. Three fastballs straight early on. 
And the next one, that's another strike. Makes the count even two and two. We started down 0-2-0, then went down. Got in two strikes now. Finds himself 2-2. Armando Quito's got to have that two-strike approach here. Four strike, four fastballs in a row. We'll see, see if he goes to the off speed. And he doesn't. Throws another fastball. That one's going to go through. Silva trying to make the play from short. Throws to first over to Soma. And Quito runs it out, beats it out. Beats out the throw from Silva. And that's going to be a single for Quito early on. Yeah, that fastball low in the zone. Quito just got a hand, uh, hand of it. Put it between the shortstop and third base hole there. And Silva couldn't quite get there to throw him out. And that's going to be infield single to lead off this game. Quito gets on base with the infield single. Now he's going to find himself on first, right? And if you're Aiden Gray, you got runners on here. And then on the other side, if you're Nico Christian, right, you can only help yourself here after you're at bat here. You're going to go out to the mound, but if you can get him, drive him home here, definitely not really opportunity for some RBIs. Yeah, always nice when you can add to your own run support there. Aiden Gray with the first pitch. That one's right down the pipe. And that's strike one. Christian Aiden finds Gray. himself down 0-1. Gray attacking that fastball there. We haven't seen any off-speed pitches yet. He's just attacking with that fastball up and inside. Gray with another one. That's another fastball. We'll see if the Rams can turn to that ball. Mishandled by Somers. And Jack Somers makes an error. That's an E to the second baseman. Yeah, Somers a uh, little quick with the hands on that one. He missed up the chance to get a 4-6-3 double play, but instead, Gray's going to have to settle down. Runners in scoring position, no outs, first and second. It looked like he got a little bit of ahead of himself there, right, looking to turn two. You know, when that ball comes at you, you're like, turn two, turn two, turn two. But instead, that he makes the error. That's the first error of the game for the Rams. Not helping out, Aiden Gray finds himself with man on first and second, no outs. Big swing there from Arias Gutierrez. Or Gutierrez, Arias takes the hack at that one, and that one was all trying to drive the ball out. No conservative approach there, first strike approach, fastball. And he whiffs on that one. Delivery there. That's another ground ball. Touched by the bag. An error by Silva. That one gets through. They're going to throw home. Can't get him. Maddox Hoffman receives that one, and that's the first run of the game. That one goes to the Vikings. Yeah, Rams defense, normally shorthanded, has been somewhat of an inhibitor in this one so far. We saw. Yeah, the middle infield, a um, little quick with their turns, trying to turn two. We saw two uh, botched double play attempts there, and now there are runners on fir first and second with nobody out again. And here's up the power hitter. Uh, the first baseman is Jorge Hilton, the lefty. So we'll see if Aiden Gray's approach changes against the lefty coming up. Yeah, we'll see if his approach changes, but obviously the defense not helping out here. Early on, Somers with the first error, and then Silva with the second error. There's another pitch. That one goes up. And that's a foul ball. That one's going to go out of play. Finds himself down 0-1. Aiden Gray getting ahead early again. And if you're Aiden Gray, right, you can't be disappointed with how you've been pitching so far, right? You've gotten two ground balls. Could have been two double plays. But instead, it's errors. And West Hill finds himself up 1-0 here. Yeah, it's been three ground balls, all of them missed by the Rams infield. So... Gray not getting the help he deserves. Hilton up at the plate. He takes that one. That one's on the outside part of the plate, and that's a strike. Uh, yeah, Gray, um, he's been attacking these hitters so far with the fastball inside. He's not really worked the outside of the plate with that off speed yet. We'll see if he wants to go to that here. Here is Gray going to deliver the second pitch in this at-bat already ahead. 0-2-1 on one strike. Gets the ground ball. Another one, Sobers doesn't make an error. This one, Silva. It's, they get one at second right, so one out. Can't get the ball over in turn two with the speedy legs of Hilton. It is a double and play, it is actually. a double play. My apologies there. That's a double play. Turn from Somers and Silva, the middle infielder, second base and third. They get two outs there, and that helps Gray out a little bit. Yeah, making up for your mistakes. That's the best way to fix it, you know? Runners on third now, but it's two outs, so Gray can easily get out of this with another in, um, out induced by a ground ball. And yeah, you got a runner on third, uh, first, or er, third, my apologies, delivery there from Gray. And that's a foul ball. That was a foul ball by number 14, Anderson, Remington Anderson. Yeah, Anderson's at second base today. Uh, we'll see if the West Hill middle infield could do a little better job than this Rams in this first inning. Anderson takes the second pitch. That one's on the outside part of the plate. And that makes it 0-2 down. Going to have to shorten up swing, right? But if you can get a ball past 
any one of the infielders, you can play another run, and those are going to be big against the Rams offense today. And there's the off-speed stuff from Gray. Throws it right down in past Anderson. Past Remington Anderson gets a third strike and the first, third out of the inning. That one closes out the top of the first. Rams down one nothing after two early errors, kind of wiping off the cobwebs. But they can get something going in here in the bottom half of this first inning. And Rams going to have to do better next inning in the top of the second. But they get escape with just one run given up. Yeah, Gray, we saw him use the slider on that final pitch of the inning. Uh, we'll see if he that becomes more of a weapon. We saw that fastball being his main tool on uh, that top of the first. We'll see if he maybe goes to the off speed um, going on further in this game. But that was a great um, inning by Gray himself. Great inning by Gray, and that's going to put up the top three hitters in the Rams order. You know, you see the top three hitters of this Rams order today. You got Jack Sheffield, or Jack Sheffield, Jack Somers, and Alex Benevento. And then behind him is Silva. Tons of speed there in the three names that I mentioned. Benevento already has a stolen base this season. Imp impressive in all aspects of his game, but really outside in the field. But at the plate is where he specializes right now. He's got four singles, five, four, five, and a triple. So four singles and a triple, as well as three walks. Hasn't gotten out yet so far this season, and we'll see if he can maintain that throughout the rest of the today, hopefully. And we'll see how many hits he can play. Yeah, now I think the big storyline here is the pitcher, Nico Christian, um, like we said many times, committed to a D1 school, Central Connecticut State. Um, I've been, I was watching his bullpen session earlier in the game, and we can see that fastball, slider, and changeup combination. I also saw a little bit of quick pitch and side steps uh, motions from him so we'll see if he tries to mess with the hitters timings and um, the velocity is um, there definitely but the off speed I think the movement is going to be his main tool today. Yeah and you mentioned these top three guys right they're going to sit fastball and then adjust once they see the spin on the ball but right their first approach is that first pitch fastball they're going to attack the fastball and these guys all three top fastball hitters, Somers you mentioned, had a little bit of a down year, batting around 180, sub 200, but that was characteristic of a bunch of the Rams last offense last season. You saw lots of guys hit under the 200 threshold, but this year we're hoping for some different stories, and you know, they've already played 22 runs in two games. We'll see if they can add to that today. Yeah, Rams offense been on fire. Um, defense um, should definitely get a lot cleaner later in this game. Pitching was definitely there in the first as well. Delivery here on the fastball to Sheffield. That one goes up and away. That's high. That's going to be ball one in yeah, the count. Sheffield squared to ball on that one. Pulled it back after he saw the fastball. is going to be up in the zone. So we'll see if he tries to bunt here with a 1-0 count. We'll see what Christian decides to throw. Throws another pitch. That one a strike. Gets it past Sheffield. Makes the count one and one. Sheffield just, I think, bunting on that first attempt just to see um, to get some leverage on him. And that one, a check swing. That one goes off the bat of Sheffield. That's going to put him down in a 1-2 count. Down with two strikes. Christian attacking here early. Gets the two fastballs down the plate, and that one gets Sheffield to check swing. Yeah, Christian's velocity definitely, ramp, definitely ramping up from one that bullpen session pregame. Here is Christian waiting. Here's the delivery. Third pitch fastball. Gets it right past Sheffield. Looked like Sheffield may have blinked there. That one goes right by him. A K backwards K, a backwards K, and a looking K. Strikeout looking. Not what you want to see if you're the Rams offense. But Jack Jack Somers has an opportunity to revive his error. Here is Somers at the plate delivery by Christian. That one inside. Gets him to swing a little bit of off-speed stuff, I believe, there. Yeah, that was that slider we saw pregame. Um, he threw it inside there, and it definitely got a swing and miss. Here is Somers. Takes the second one. That one way outside. Not even a question on whether or not to take that one. That makes it a 1-1 count. Interesting approach by both pitchers. Christian definitely going with more of an off-speed approach. That one fouled off by... Somers, that one almost hit a car, and you know, everyone on the bench goes crazy. Even maybe even a fan, I believe. Well, lots of foul balls you mentioned. Not a wide cage show. You're going to see a lot of foul balls today. That one fouled off by Somers. Makes it a 1 2 count. Oh, 
It's over, that one strike. Another K looking for Christian, mowing down these new Canaan Rams batters impressively. Gets out Jack Sheffield and Jack Somers on the strikeout looking. Yeah, he's freezing them, freezing them with those fastballs. He's starting the approaches with the sliders early in the count and going to that um, upper 80s fastball later in the count, but it's definitely getting the Rams to freeze. And here's up the main man, Alex Benevento. Alex Benevento, the Brown commit D1 baseball bound next season up at the plate. Christian goes first pitch. Off speed, that one gets in there. Strike past Benevento, and I think he was just waiting, looking there, seeing the delivery. Yeah, Christian's going to live and die by the slider. We'll see if the Rams can get a handle of it later in this game. Christian throws a first pitch strike to Benevento. Benevento takes the time out. Just going to take a moment to kind of slow down, right? Christian trying to speed up the pace of this Rams batters, or to speed up the pace of this game, right? Get through Rams batters, like one, two, three, but instead... Benevento takes the time. There's a second one, that one flied out into center field. We'll see who's under it. And Benevento, that one gets past him. That's gonna be a double for Benevento. Now six for six on the season. That one couldn't be fielded by the center fielder. Uh, Armando Quito out in center. Fly ball hit by Benevento and that's why we talk about him. Goes into center field, hits the double early on. Yeah, Keto known for that defense. Uh, he just couldn't quite get to there. Um, that v exit velocity off the bat of Benevento was just too much. And, you know, Benevento's just doing what he's doing. He's been doing this all year, all throughout his high school career. High school batting average is 462. I mean, that's Barry Bonds type levels of um, excellence throughout the high school. You mentioned Benevento stepped in. A lot of these seniors, Silva and Somers, all started playing their sophomore year. They came in freshman year, played JV. That one's gonna be a ball a little bit low. But these seniors, right, they came in freshman year, joined the team for the state playoff run, but then immediately got their licks opportunities in their sophomore season and then continued it throughout the junior and senior season. So you find yourself with a lot of experienced seniors. That one mishandled by the second baseman on the pickoff attempt to second. Benevento slides from second to third, not able to be corralled there. And the missed throw by Anderson, Remington Anderson playing at second base. Now on the pickoff, the pickoff idea from Christian and it looked like he might have gotten Benevento with a good throw there. Yeah, that throw just a little bit behind him. I think it actually hit off Benevento and rolled into on, left center field. Benevento at third runner, a duck on the pond as they call it in baseball. That one taken by Silva. The shortstop committed to Colby. He made the error in the first inning, top of the first, but he's the only one on this Rams team with a home run this year. He homered in their first game of the season. It was a three-run home run. He also has seven RBIs with his team leading. Silva gets another one there, a single to right field. He's gonna play Benevento. He's gonna round first, look towards second, but there's a single by Silva, and he does what he's been doing all season. Gets his eighth RBI on the season. Benevento comes home, drives in a run, makes it 1-1. Yeah, talk, New talk about a dynamic duo in the batting order. You know, third and fourth, you have your two best hitters, both batting over 400 this year and throughout their high school careers. Uh, Benevento gets on base, makes some stuff happen on the base pass, and Silva drives him in with the opposite field hit. And we talked to Bloss before this game, right, and he mentioned that middle part of the lineup has been hitting so well this season. And then here comes a sophomore, Adrian Delicata, had his hit on Saturday, looks to add to that season total with an opportunity here to advance Silva, maybe even drive him in. Yeah, Delicata DHing today. We can see him on the mound sometimes, but right now no fielding position, just hitting. Christian with the delivery, that one a strike right in there to Delicata. That one I believe was inside right, that was an inside fastball. Gets it past Delicata, makes it a 1-1 count. Yeah, Christian really attacking every hitter inside and as well with that inside breaking ball. We'll see how he uses the slider against the lefty here. On deck, you have Will Langford. Delicata at the plate. Hits that one off the ground. That's going to be a tough play for the second baseman, but Delicata, that one's thrown away. That one thrown around by Remington Anderson. Makes the error there. That one moves uh, Silva to third. Makes it, puts Silva at third. Delicata at first. You know, both defenses plagued here by errors, and the Vikings had an opportunity there to close out the inning, but this inning's going to keep on going for the Rams offense. Yeah, both teams, we are seeing some unsolid defense by both ends, and uh, 
like we saw West Hill take advantage of it in the top of the first. The Rams are now taking advantage with a chance to walk in some more runs. Runners on first and second, two outs. That was a great hit by Delicata up the middle. Just uh, ball bounced up, and the second baseman, uh, Remington, just couldn't really get there. Threw it over the first baseman's head. Yeah, that one went off the plate right, bounced up over uh, Christian's head right. So that was a tough play for Remington. Had to run right in, charge in, and then throw to first, make the crossbody throw. Not able to do that as wasn't able to be fielded by the first baseman, Jorge Hillington. Yeah, but this long inning, Gray is going to have to get loose behind us. He's throwing behind us, uh, and Rams hoping to make this inning even longer with Will Langford up now. Here is Langford digging in. That one a strike right at the knees. That's a fastball. That's two outs in the inning, right? Langford with an opportunity here to add. And here's Langford digging in against Christian. Runners on first and third for Langford. Christian with another pitch. That one an inside off speed pitch. That one comes in slider. That one makes it 0-2. Langford's got to tighten up two strike approach here. See if he can drive in a runner as there's two outs in the inning. And another out here, another strike will end the inning. Delicata goes a little bit earlier. Christian, he might have to give himself up. Here is Delicata. They throw home, gonna just confuse stuff. Delicata, they're gonna see what they can do, and they just move <laughs> Delicata over to second. And they keep Silva at third. Silva got off the bag a little bit, playing mind games with Christian. We saw a little smile from Bloss there. The trickery happening here early on. You know, trying to get the attention of the pitcher, and I guess just waving your arms in between first and second base still will get his attention, and it ends up getting two runners in scoring position for the Rams now. Smart running by Delicata there, right? Find yourself trapped in between first and second. Mess with the pitcher, that one. Oh, he gets past Langford. And that's the first K, that's a third K. First K swinging for Christian. You mentioned Sheffield and Somers had the Ks looking to begin the inning. That's a strikeout by Langford. Yeah, and Christian, end the inning. Christian got a little bit unlucky there. Um, he, only, he really only had two two real hits allowed against him and that allowed, only, that allowed a run. Almost money more um, due to the poor defense behind him. Some due to Christian himself, but he got through the inning, it's still 1-1. And yeah. now we can see the Rams back in the field and West Hill get a chance to take the lead once more. Top of the second here, no outs. And we're gonna see some Vikings offense. It'll be number uh, number fifth, number six leading off. That is Gratis, Gratuso, Daniel Gratuso leading off, then followed by, uh, followed by Zach Voras, and then followed by Josef, uh, Joseph Pascarella, that's going to be the three up for the Vikings, and hopefully more. If you're a head coach, if you're a head coach, Mike Ravellis, right? You never want to have three run, three batters come up in an inning. You always want to have at least four, maybe even five, as many out there as you can. Yeah, this West Hill team um, as a whole is much younger than this Rams team. Um, they have a lot of sophomores, a lot of juniors on this team. Um, Rams mainly made up of a lot of key seniors. Um, the West Hill uh, is mainly playing for the future right now as their um, seniors leaving. Um, we can see their star that on the mound and at the plate, Nico Christian, as well as their other commit, Donofrio, um, Colin Donofrio. Uh, he'll be graduating as well this year. And if you're the Rams, I know it's a little bit early to talk about postseason expectations, but you got to think this Rams team has some pretty high expectations after showing themselves that they, that they could make it far in the state playoffs last year. As that one first pitch strike delivered by Gray, but going back, right, the Rams definitely have high intentions for this season to make a deep run in the FCAC playoffs and then the state playoffs. Gray with the delivery. That one, a high fastball, fouled off there by Gret Gratis. Gratuso. Fouled off by Gratuso. Yeah, Excuse Gray, me. he's sticking with that fastball. He thinks that's the key to his success. And we saw it in the first inning. It mainly was a lot of ground balls, um, but those induced errors. Self-inflicted errors from the Rams in the top of the first. Another foul ball by Gratuso. Delivered by Gray. That one makes it an 0-2 count. Yeah. Here, Gray ahead early. Now you can kind of throw, uh, move off that fastball right, throw some off-speed stuff. Move into like your secondary pitches, your third pitches. All right, see what you can do. Yeah, I think Gray little held his breath a little with that one. That one ended up middle-middle. Lucky the hitter missed it. That one 
An off-speed pitch goes down. Well, that one outside, I believe that was a slider, right, Henry? That one goes, Greg. It's the third strike. That's a strikeout swinging for Gratuso, and that's the way to start off if you're Greg. Yeah, two strikeouts in a row. He struck out Anderson to end the first. Uh, we'll see if he can keep this strikeout train rolling uh, with the catcher Voros, Zachary Voros, up to bat now. Voros up to Zachary Voros. Takes the first pitch strike by Aiden Gray. And if you're coach boss, pitching coach Gallo, right, you're happy with these first pitch strikes, these second pitch strikes. Get ahead in the count early, and you'll always find success. Gray with the delivery. That one delivered. Can't be fielded by Gray, but fielded by Somers. Throws over two first to Soma. And gets a mouse. Voris not able to run out the ground ball, beat out the ground ball. Great fielding play from Somers. Over to Soma under pressure. That puts two outs on the scoreboard. Yeah, that was a great play by Somers. Uh, we saw Aiden Gray. He reached out, extended as far as he could, trying to get that ball. He couldn't quite get there. Somers with the quick hands uh, trying to get there. Here is Gray on the mound. Throws the first pitch. That one a little bit outside, but again, sticking to the first pitch fastballs. So he throws one there. Yes, third baseman Pascarella up now. We saw him make a good play in the field last inning. That one ground, strike. grounded back towards us. 1-1 one, one here, 1-1. One, one. That makes it 1-1 one, one in the count. The first pitch fastball high and away. The second one fouled off by Pascarella. Pascarella digging in. 1-1 one, one count for Gray here. Winds up and pitches. That one gets him to ground over, over to Langford. Langford gonna make the easy play. That one bounces, not picked by Soma. And another fielding error, this time by Langford. And the only one in this infield that hasn't made an error today yet is Soma. As we mentioned, you saw this error from Somers and Silva, and then now Langford, you gotta tighten up that infield defense. Yeah, uh, Langford got caught in between a little. We saw him, he was moving back, then moving in, moving back and moving in, trying to field that ground ball. Got caught in between, weird hop, and he had to rush the throw because of the speed by Pascarella, and throwing the dirt, couldn't get scooped by Soma at first. Yeah, and normally that's a routine play, right? Lapin for even any of these middle infielders. That one delivered by Gray, inside pitch, a fastball. A little bit too much inside. That one makes it a 1-0 count. But normally you see Langford make that play. Uh, yeah, that should be an easy play by any of these middle and Gray these delivers, throw over by Hoffman. Almost gets him at first. Now it's Rooney digging in number 13. The last guy in this Vikings, uh, in this Vikings order. So if you're the Rams, right, you want to get this guy out and then start clean in the top of the third. But if you lengthen this right, if you let this guy get on base or get a hit, then you're gonna have to turn it over to the top of the order as Gray gets the fastball in there for the strike. That one makes it one to one. Yeah, Rooney the shortstop. Um, great defensively there. We saw a little bit of a mishap with that throwback um, by Nico on the mound, but not entirely his fault there. Gray with another pitch. That one grounded over to the left side, fielded by assistant coach Tisha. Mr. Tisha, another guy talked about a lot inside the halls of New Canaan High School, first year over in New Canaan after being at the middle school for quite some time. Yeah, I know he, lo he loves his job as the, as the assistant coach for the Rams here. That one swung on by Rooney, thrown over by Hoffman to Soma, and the Rams escaped that inning without giving up a run after the error, error from Langford. Throw over to Silva or over to Soma, fields that one by Hoffman. Hoffman throws over to Soma, fields it, that one closes the end of the inning. But in that top of the third, the Vikings switch over and you're gonna have the top of the lineup. That's gonna be Keto, Christian, and Garez. Uh, yeah, the West Hill, they, they have one run on the board, but I have not seen a ball leave this infield um, with Aiden Gray on the mound so far. Uh, it's been unlucky. We saw that first ball, that first hit um, by Quito that got between um, Langford and Silva at short, but um, so Aiden Gray is in complete control out there on the mound. We saw two strikeouts last inning, and I think we can, he can keep this train rolling, especially with some solid defense behind him as we see Nico Christian back on the mound. Yeah, and for the Rams, the top three coming up, Jake Soma playing first base today, Maddox Hoffman, the freshman behind the dish, catching, and Benny Hegel, and then you flip over to the top of the order, so both teams, we're gonna see the top of the order is guaranteed 
next inning, but if you're a Rams fan, you want the Rams to come up. You want to see that top of the lineup, which includes Sheffield and Somers, and then Benevento and Silva this inning. Uh, yeah, the, Christian was attacking first pitch with that slider inside to those righty batters. Um, we'll see if he continues to go with that. And I think the, the Rams batters can be expecting. I don't know if they should sit first, first pitch slider. Um, if they were listening to my advice, that's not great. But uh, we'll see if they continue to um, go with that first pitch slider or if Christian will mix it up, maybe go outside with the slider or outside with the fastball or changeup. Top, bottom of the second here, game tied, knotted at one here at Mead Park. Again, if you're just joining us on NCTV 78, thank you for joining us for this first baseball stream of the season. The New Canaan Rams hosting the West Hill Vikings here at Mead Park on a perfect 73 degree day. And we can't be more excited to bring you this one as the delivery by Christian. That one goes right by, right by Hoffman. Talk about first pitch sliders. That was all heat with the fastball. Yeah, Christian maybe switching up the approach going into the second inning of work here. Here is Christian going into his second inning of work, as you mentioned. That one misses a little bit. That one missed a little bit low. There on the pitch from Christian makes it a 1-1 count. One ball, one strike for Jake Soma, who's digging in. Soma digs in, gets a bat on that one. That one doesn't hit the ground. Great rip. That one's a line out fielded at shortstop. Shortstop by Rooney. Rooney fields that one with no hesitation, no issues there. Fielded by Rooney, gets him out, one out yeah, for the Rams. Yeah, that's tough as a hitter. You do everything right in your approach. You line the ball, top exit velocity. It's just unluckily at a guy right there at shortstop. So hopefully it uh, doesn't hurt him too much down the line. That's the first pitch. That one goes low to Hoffman. Trip. And the umpire's coming out. Not entirely sure what he's coming out for here. Christian's injured on the mound. Looks like Christian might be injured, as you mentioned, leaping. We saw. I saw him wince after that pitch. I don't know what exactly he grabbed or anything, but um, we'll see if anyone gets tossing in this West Hill bullpen. It looks like he's pointing towards his legs, but not entirely sure what he's pointing at. But he's bent over right now on the mound. Ankle, ankle. He rolled his right ankle on the mound. He rolled his right ankle on the mound. I'll take that from you here. But a moment kind of to pause, right? Game's tied at one right now. One out in the bottom of the second. Soma with the line out to Rooney at short. A little break in the action. For what has been a fast paced game so far, you mentioned both pitchers just dominating on the mound going through. Uh, going through batters pretty quickly except for a couple of the errors from the Rams infield and then you saw an error from the Vikings infield. Yeah, we'll see if Christian back on the mound obviously with that um, roll in that ankle. Hoffman in the back of the box. No, he didn't, no, he thought about swinging there. Checks his swing. Did he go? Doesn't go. Did not go. It was an inside slider. Maddox held up there. That was a great hold there. It's going to be a 2-1 count here for Hoffman in the box. Takes that one, that one up and in. Fastball, my apologies. Now it's a 3-0 count. It wasn't 2-1, it was 2-0. Now 3-0 for Hoffman. And assuming that he'll get the take sign here, 3-0. No intention of swinging, but you want to make it look like you're going to swing. That's yeah. ball 4. A four-pitch walk from Christian. Puts a runner on first. That's Maddox Hoffman at first now on base. And that's going to put up Bennett Hegel. Maybe in two or three years when Hoffman is an upperclassman, they'll, they'll give him that green light on a 3-0 count. But right now as a freshman and only his uh, third game, I think they're going to hold him as a, with a red light there. Yeah, and you're just trying to get right. You're trying to get runners on base here early in the game. There's no need to rush things. And make Christian throw pitches after he went down in Winston Payne, right? You want to make him... Wins him in pain, and that's the first walk on the day from either pitcher. A walk to Hoffman. Hegel taking full advantage of this opportunity to get everyday reps in right field for the Rams. Here is Hegel stepping into the box. One ball, no strikes. Saw a quick pitch attempt by the pitcher last time. 
That one, a little bit of a quick pitch, right? Didn't go completely into his lineup. Gets it past Hegel. That one makes it 1-1. Fastball. That, Hoffman on first. That pitch definitely up and in. Somehow clipped the zone by the um, umpire's call there. We'll see if Hegel's got to be more weary of that. That one thrown over by Christian. Over to first base. That was Hilton fielding the ball. Just checking, keeping Maddox Hoffman close. You, right, you want to keep Hoffman close. Make sure he doesn't steal a bag on you. We actually can see someone warming up in the West Hill bullpen there. That one skied up to center field. That one caught in center by Quito. Doesn't make an error there. You mentioned the first ball in the first inning. Got over his head from Benevento. But that one fielded by Quito. Fly ball to center field fielded. That one makes it two outs in the inning. And that puts Sheffy at the dish with Hoffman on first. Sheffy had the look, strikeout looking in the first inning. Christian throws over, back over, trying to get Hoffman. But Sheffy back at the dish for a second at bat on the day. Lefty Logan Parra warming up in the West Hill bullpen far down the right field line. We'll see if um, Christian's injury is too bad for him to continue. Christian, that one goes way outside. Looks like a fastball. He just lost control of, goes out in the other batter's box. Puts Sheffield up 0-1, gives him the advantage against Christian. Everyone telling him to work the count. See if Maddox wants to take a base here. Pitch there by Christian. That one on the ground over to third base, thrown over. Gets Sheffield on the ground ball. That was from... Pascarella over to Hilton. Pascarella to Hilton. Fielded the ball, got it over to first. And then got Sheffy out on the ground out. And that makes him 0 for 2 on the day. Yeah, great play by the third base from there. We saw him look to second. Maddox with those wheels got to second too quick. He made the throw to first and got the out. He's out of the inning. Christian uh, with his first clean inning of work here in this one. And uh, we'll see if he comes out for the next inning. We'll see if we can see any more pitchers warming up, see if Christian's on the bench, but that could be his last inning of work if that ankle is bothering him still. And you're gonna see Gray here come out, top of the third here at Mead Park, New Canaan hosting West Hill. New Canaan comes in 2-0, West Hill at 3-1. 1-1 right now in the game. And Gray out for his third inning of work, and talk to me about Gray so far today. He looks pretty good. Oh, Gray's been power dominant today. And but what I mean by that is that fastball has been working for him. He's been tacking every pit, every hitter with that fastball. The slider has been a nice complement to that. We see him getting reaching to that with 0-2, 1-2 counts. Um, going outside of the zone with that one as we see a throw down by Maddox. And yeah, Gray's has been dominant. A lot of um, that a lot of ground balls induced by those fastballs. Uh, defense hasn't really been there throughout the game, but we'll see if um, we'll see if he can continue his dominance there. Yeah, and you've seen him rely predominantly on that fastball, right? Attacking his hitters, attacking everyone that comes into the box with his fastball so far. We'll see his approach in the top of the third inning. It's going to be number three, Quito up. The West Hill Vikings have gone through the order once. This is their second time around. But their second hey. looks at Aiden Gray. That one a strike on the outside part of the plate. Yeah, the center, ball. center fielder Quito singled in this first at bat. That was between the shortstop and third baseman. As we see West Hill maybe getting some medical supplies for their pitcher. Luke Bopp also warming up in the Rams bullpen behind us, number seven. Gray with the pitch there. Not expecting to see the new Canaan bullpen right, but you do mention they have everyone ready to go today as Jensen is one of the only two pitchers that is pitching. He's pitched almost the entirety of the season so far, except for an inning as Gray throws the second strike there on Keto. Puts him in a one-two count right now. Keto down to his last strike. Singled off Gray in the first, looking to do the same here. Delivery by Gray, that one off-speed pitch gets him to foul ball. That one's a foul ball that goes off the plate up. Fielded by Hoffman, but that one's out of play. Yeah, I was a great swing, a major league swing there by that major league looking player with a mustache, senior. Uh, he grounded it out behind him, Maddox uh, gloves it there. You'll definitely see Keto right, shorten up that swing, just try to get bat on ball as he does that one. That one goes over 
to Silva. Silva over to Soma. Gets the tag there. Gets him out, but that one, another uncharacteristic wild throw by Silva. That one goes a little bit to the right, but gets the out. Puts a one out in the first inning. Yeah, Soma kind of in Soma kind of sat there. That ball slowed down in the dirt a lot, and I don't think Silva was expecting that at short. He was expecting it to come quick to him, but he should have attacked that ball, and because of that, he had to make a quick transfer, quick throw, and Soma made an excellent play, having to tag the runner there. Silva makes the play cleanly there. Puts a one out in the inning. First pitch ball by Gray here on number number two, Christian, the pitcher. Yeah, he's still batting even with that ankle. I thought they could have uh, switched for him, but he's still in there. And Aiden Gray attacking him early inside. He had to dodge out of those two inside fastballs. He reached on an error in his first at bat. We'll see if maybe the speed element of Christian's game um, could take a little step down with that um, tweaked ankle. Here is Gray with the first ball there. Another one, that's his third ball. My apologies, three balls, no strikes. Yeah, he is really not trying to face uh, Christian here. Three pitches all almost hitting him. We'll see where this, four, this fourth pitch lands in this at-bat. Gray flirting with the walk here. That one is strike. Yeah. Fastball right down the middle. Got to get something down the pipe. Just got to throw a strike there. Yeah, he's had to get a strike on the board. I think he knew Christian would have a red light. Another pitch there by Gray. That one gets in there, slides in there. That's the second strike on the count. Puts the count at full. Yeah, Gray's arm angle a little lower on that one, going with more of a sidearm approach. For Dan Silva, Silva, no chance at that one. And that's his first technical hit on the day, but he's been on base twice. Yeah, that one. We see the West Hill, uh, they're pulling the ball heavily against Gray. They were a little early on that. Uh, that ball just pulled between Silva and Langford at shortstop and third base. And um, Nico, J Nico uh, Christian just saying, what ankle injury? as he has a great hit um, getting him on the first base. You see timeout by the West Hill coaches. Timeout by the West Hill coaches, I believe. They might get a runner pitch for runner. Christian. Maybe a pitch runner right. Just had to get some hitting gear. We're gonna be at a little bit of a pause here. Top of the third, both teams with a run, 1-1 here at Mead Park, New Canaan, hosting West Hill. Thank you for joining us here on NCTV 78 for this star-studded matchup in between West Hill and New Canaan on this perfect weather Tuesday afternoon. Obviously always a threat to steal. It's gonna be Garez up in the box once we resume play here. Top of the third again, top of the third, one out. Both teams tied at one. Sorry, coach. With the delivery there, again, all heat. Throws the fastball, first pitch goes in for the strike. First pitch strike by Gray. Would be interesting to see the first pitch strike rate by Gray today. Yeah, Hilton hit into a double play in that first at bat. Um, no chance to hit into a double play with two outs, but he can surely end the inning, and that's what exactly what the Rams are hoping for. A little bit early on the fastball there by Hitlin. That one just a foul ball off to the right, a weak foul ball. That one makes it 0-2 in the count. No balls, two strikes. Aiden Gray on the mound. Gray versus Garez and Christian on first base. Hilton going to try to elevate one here. Gray with the pitch goes right back to the fastball. Then at the plate, the lefty, we saw him pounding the fastballs up and inside in the zone. We eventually we saw that fastball way above the zone, got him, we got the batter looking high, and then got the strikeout on that slider low in the zone, inside to that lefty. So that was great pitch sequence by Maddox and um, Aiden Gray on the mound. Great pitch sequence by Gray there, able to get out of the top of the third, transitioning to the bottom of the third, 1-1 one, one game between West Hill and New Canaan and uncharacter uncharacteristic of this New Canaan offense this season to only have one run at this point, but they only do have one. You mentioned Sheffield got the last out on the ground out. Yeah, Nico Christian back into the game. We saw him get a hit in that last inning. We saw him get a little shaken up in the inning before. 
But he's still out there. He's been dominant throughout this one, and we'll see if he can continue that into the bottom of the third inning here. Yeah, in case you just joined us, right, Christian was on the mound in the bottom of the second, had to take a quick five, like three or four minute break, had to stretch, figure out what was up with his ankle. Then he comes out in the top of the third in singles, second time on base, and they even got him a sliding mitt. Didn't have to use it in that uh, top of the third, but got him the sliding mitt. Not sure there's anything wrong with him right now. I think he's just gonna power through against the top of this new Kane and Rams lineup. And up for the Rams right now, you got Jack Somers, followed by Alex Benevento, who has the only run of the day with that double out in center pass, Quito. And then after him is Henry Silva, and then you move on to that middle of the order, the meaty part of the order with Delicata, Langford, Langford and Soma. Uh, yeah, Somers up now. He was caught staring at a fastball, struck out looking in that first inning. And this Here is Somers up at the dish against Christian. Pitch, bunt attempt there by Somers, tries to bunt. That one goes foul. That's gonna be the first strike by Christian. Great job, just getting the ball in the zone. Yeah, we saw Somer, uh, we saw Somers trying to go the opposite way with a bunt there. That one just rolled foul. We'll see if he stays with that same approach in this pitch. Here is Christian winding up for the second pitch of this at bat. Throws it. That's a fastball. Catches a little bit too much of the plate. Diving catch by Keto as he lays out. And you can't be mad at that one from Somers. Great job just to get the bat on the ball. Great play. Line out to center field, though. Caught by Keto. Yeah, that's an incredible. Out center field. That's an incredible play, you know. He, saw, he misread it maybe uh, starting it out. He was moving left and right. He found exactly where that ball was going. He dialed in on it, and he made a diving grab to get that. And nothing you can do if you're Somers. You do everything right there. To the, just the results will come if you keep doing that. And if you're Christian right, you can't catch too much, too much of the plate here against Benevento. The D1 Brown commit Benevento up at the dish right now. You mentioned one for one and six for six on the season with his three walks, so he's perfect. And he takes that one. And you gotta think Christian's gonna stay away from that fastball, right? Because Benevento's been on it. And you're gonna try to throw some off speed stuff here. Yeah, they're gonna try to get Benevento um, swinging at something in the dirt. And if they walk him, they're still gonna have to face another incredible batter up next. And that's roped by Benevento. That one's in the gap between center and right. Benevento rounding first three. over to second. Could go three. He's going to round three with those legs. He's speedy out there. Down, face first slide into third. Second triple on the year from Benevento. And what a way to get this third inning soft started after a line out to center field from Somers. Benevento gets the triple. Runner in scoring position. 1-1 one, one with a chance to strike for the Rams. That's an incredible swing. That was an inside out fastball. That swing inside out, quick hands to the ball. He pushed that between the right and center fielders. And that one just kept rolling, rolling. We, we know there's uneven grass. That one rolled all the way to the wall. Benevento turned on the Jets, rounding second. You could see he put everything he had. He slid, he slid head first in the third. We saw a cloud of dust and the umpires waving him safe. Silva now has a great chance. A uh, pitcher who has, could not find the zone recently and a great runner on third. We'll see if Silva takes advantage and drives him in, giving the Rams the lead. And Silva has eight RBIs on the season. Seven of those are Benevento's runs. So Silva's been able to convert these prior two games. We'll see if he can convert again. He converted earlier in this game in that first inning after he brought in, drove in Benevento. So we'll see if he can do it again. Henry Silva. The Colby commit stepping into the box, the three hitter on the four hitter on this new Canaan Rams team. That one's a first pitch strike from Christian. All fastball after he slid away from the fastball right in that prior at bat against Benevento. Goes right back to the fastball. This time against Silva. First pitch strike. One strike, no balls. Benevento on third for Silva. Silva takes that one up and in. That was a fastball up and inside. Taken by Silva. That one makes it 1-1 one, one count. One ball, one strike for Silva. Yeah, a lot of ways to score Benevento. Errors, fly balls, and anything in between. Even a pass ball, we could see the score of Benevento, the speedy center fielder. Christian with the delivery. That one a strike on the outside part of the plate. That one makes it one ball, two strike count for 
Silva and Silva got a sh has got have to shorten up the swing here there right and the primary objective is putting the ball in play for Benevento. Yeah, putting one in play. We see the first baseman up close. That one of high fastball by Christian Silva gets a sliver of that bat on the ball. And that one makes it, again, a one-two count. Silva staying alive in the box. Benevento on third. Christian on the mound for his third inning pitching. Bottom of the third here at Mead Park. 73 degrees on this Tuesday afternoon. Christian throws that one, and they're going to say Silva did not go. Silva checked his swing there, didn't go past that front part of the plate, so that's going to be ball two on the game. Yeah, Silva with a little shuffle, maybe taken after Juan Soto on that ball. Silva with the Silva shuffle, we'll call it here. Two balls, two strikes, all twos. That one outside. Makes it 3 2 full count here. Just applying pressure to Christian Wright. Give me your best. Silva saying, Give me your best pitch here so I can drive in Benevento at third. Silva with the only RBI for the Rams today. We'll see if he can add on another one here or get on base. There's the delivery. That one hit by Silva. Staying alive again. Silva staying alive. 3 2 count. That one fouled off to his right over into the parking lot here at Mead Park. Henry Silva digging in here, three, two count, full count against Christian. Benevento on third again, runner in scoring position. There's Silva, he takes that one, smart take. Went from down one, two, to drawing the walk there. After a couple of foul balls, great job by Silva to get on base, goes over to first base. Runners on first and third here for the lefty, Adrian Delicata, just a sophomore. Yeah, it's gonna be a great opportunity for him. One out, runners on the corners for the sophomore. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of experience at the varsity level, but uh, he's, getting, he's getting thrown right in there now. Uh, we saw him reach on an error in that first at bat where he rolled one straight over the pitcher's head to the second baseman and then also with some uh, fancy base running after that we saw. Here is Delicata digging in, runner on first and third. Christian still on the mound. You gotta wonder what the leash is for your ace, right? You're gonna leave him in, of course, through the end of this inning, I would believe, but then you gotta kind of make a judgment based on how your bullpen's feeling, right? Who you have in the bullpen. You mentioned you saw the lefty Paro warning, warming up in right field. Here is Christian Delicata digging in. There's the pitch, that one drove by Delicata in between the left field and center field in the left center. Silva trying to get to third and he does, gets down. Delicata caught, thought about going to second but just returns back to first. The sophomore picking up his first RBI on the air. Adrian Delicata driving in Benevento and that puts it Benevento at eight runs on the year and he hasn't gotten out once yet. Yeah, Delicado's first RBI at the varsity level. That's a great milestone to reach for him. And the offense doesn't stop there. Will Langford, um, the third baseman, the senior, he struck out swinging in that first at bat, but same situation, runners on the corners, one out. We'll see if he can pick up what his teammates are putting down out there. Will Langford, one of 14 seniors on this Rams team this year, digging in, runners on the corner. That one, the first pitch strike delivered by Christian. Yeah, the change of the approach by uh, Nico Christian out there. He was attacking almost every hitter in that first inning with a slider inside to all these righties. Uh, now that they started knocking him around, he's going with that first pitch fastball approach. And that one, an off-speed pitch, foul! drove into left field. They're gonna call that one a foul ball by Langford. But you saw him there hunt fastball when he saw the spin on the ball, kind of waited back, then drove that ball to left field. And that's gonna be a foul ball, that's gonna make it an 0-2 count right now for Langford digging in. One out here at Mead Park. Rams up two to one. Here is Langford digging in again. Runners at the corner. Delicata at third. Silva at, or Delicata at first. Silva at third. Langford gonna just stay there. That one gets past the catcher, Voras. Not able to be fielded cleanly. That one moves Delicata over to second. Yeah, Langford with the quick feet there. He had to get out of the way of that one. That ball getting stuck in the fencing right in front of us. And the catcher um, 
couldn't really get to that one. Zachary Voros didn't have a play at second, so Delicata with the free base. Yeah, and you mentioned right now you have runners on second and third in comparison to first and third, right? So now a single may drive in both runners, Delicata and Silva. Yeah. Here, Langford up at the plate. Count even at two now. Um, Christian definitely losing some of that control. I'd be surprised if we see him for another inning after this one. Two balls, two strikes. Langford up at the dish, and he strikes out again. Second strikeout on the day. Christian just throwing the fastball there, gets him swinging right past Langford. Yeah, here's Jake Soma. Um, he lined out to shortstop that first at bat. It was a laser beam off the bat of Soma, off the bat of Soma, but directly into the glove of the shortstop. We'll see if he can hit another line drive off Christian. That one, a first pitch strike. That was a fastball. Caught him at the knees. Fastball, first pitch strike to Soma. That one gives him the advantage. Runners on second and third. Soma trying to rebound from a not so great um, uh, 2022 as he hit well below the Mendoza line of 200. He was in the 160s with some um, inconsistent defense at the catcher position. They moved from the first, much more solid out there as we've seen some, by some plays today with the tags. Here is Soma there at the plate. That one, he strikes out. Three straight strikes there after the foul ball. Strikes out swinging. So better than looking, right? Strikes out swinging against Christian. And the Vikings are going to have to come up with some offense. New Canaan up 2-1. to one. Five hits compared to the two from the Vikings. And then three errors from the Rams. And then two from the Vikings. So five errors in the first three innings. That was the bottom of the third. And thank you for joining us here on NCTV. We're going to be moving into the top of the fourth. Again, if you're just joining us, thank you for joining us here on NCTV. Myself, John Frieders, joined alongside Henry Lapin, bringing you today's coverage alongside Anav Sahai, who's producing, AJ Pulici, who's on replay, and Robbie Williams out there with the camera you see from center field. And I'm excited to be out here, right, Henry? It's 73 degrees. It was rainy all last week, and now we got a chance to watch some baseball. I know both of us played. Now we've moved on to the other side of the sport where we're calling games, which is exciting. And we're grateful to be here, grateful to be calling this game. And no better day to come out here than a Tuesday afternoon where it's 75 degrees at the beginning of April for some high school baseball. Um, yeah, it's great to be out here. Um, great to be standing. Uh, we got our great camera setups behind the plate out in center field. Um, we're just continuing to get better. Uh, we'll bring a lot more games in the future. And uh, something I've noticed um, with this West Hill team now, um, their defensive um, formations, they have all of those middle infielders and that captain out in center field all have wristbands out there along with the head coach. You can see them um, doing little motions, um, almost like they're deciding to steal bases, but that's to position their um, middle infield and outfield better. Up now you can see Anderson, Remington Anderson. He struck out swinging in that first at bat. He's at second base today, number six. Here is Anderson. That one way off wide. The fastball by Gray goes wide left fielded by Hoffman there. Obviously no runners on base, but not what you want to see if you're Coach Bloss. And Aiden Gray goes wide there on the pitch. Maybe we'll have control of that one. Pitch there by Gray. A fastball. That one tipped by the bat of Anderson. 1-1. One, one. One, one count, right? One ball, one strike. Here Anderson up at the dish against Aiden Gray. Here is Gray, the delivery on the 1-1. One, one. Throws a strike right at the knees. Anderson not able to get a bat on that one. I mentioned see, Anderson, the five hitter in this lineup for the Vikings. Rams bullpen, we see um, See, uh, he struck, um, Gatteroso strung out, struck out swing in that first at bat, and Aiden Gray uh, trying to repeat that. Gray with the off speed stuff there. Not a fastball. That one gets a little bit low. I believe that might have been a changeup or a curveball, but probably a changeup, right, Henry? That one goes low. The next pitch, that one ground up the middle. We'll see if Somers can get there. He does. Tries to make the throw. Maybe not the smart throw to go across the ball. Maybe you just want to hold that ball. That's a play where you might be kicking him for throwing that ball. Yeah, um, you just gotta eat that ball in the middle infield, but can't really blame him for trying to make the play. As a ball player, you try to make plays all the time. That one just didn't really have the 
the reach to grab that ball and the arm strength to make that as Soma had to come off the mound to off, off the first base to grab that one. And that might even be Silva's ball, right? If he can get across, if he's fast enough, you know, he's playing a pretty deep right now because balls have just been skyrocketing through that left side of the infield, right? The Vikings able to get the bat on ball. As that one, a first pitch strike by Gray. Contact made by the Vikings. Here yeah. is number four, Voras, after the single by Gattuoso. Yeah, he hit into a ground ball. Um, Last last at bat. Great. Um, hasn't had any runners on really since that first inning. But we'll see how he deals with them now. Gattuso with the swing there on the gray on the gray fastball. That one was low. Make the play and he does just that on Voras. As Pascarella, my apologies, Pascarella fired that one into right field. That one was fielded by Hegel, the sophomore making the play. The fly out there by Pascarella, leaving a runner on first stranded. Yeah, great, great job working out of that um, with pa uh, a base on balls, a walk in that first at bat. And we'll see how he does in the second at bat, his second approach against the D1 commit. Christian against Hoffman at the start of this fourth, bottom of this fourth inning. But Henry, what have you been liking so far from Christian? Um, I've liked his location. I've liked his approaches at, uh, on the mound. That fastball definitely plus velocity. And that, we haven't seen much of the changeup today. It's mainly been the fastball slider combination that we see a lot of major leaguers in college um, aces going to now. But um, I like where I like his locations. He's gotten unlucky facing against the Rams, uh, you know, top-notch hitters, top FCAC hitters. But I think he's been very solid today. Could get some more help out in that infield. But... Um, I think he'll do great in this inning as well. Here is Christian on the mound, throws the first pitch, that one way off the plate in the dirt there, fielded by the Viking catcher, thrown back to Christian, but Hoffman already starts to count at an advantage with one ball, no strikes on the scoreboard. That one, a second pitch, fastball. Hoffman was a little bit or early with that bat speed. You mentioned tremendous bat speed from the freshman. Great defense behind the dish. And Talked with Coach Bloss before the game, and he talked about his instincts, right, being defensively just solid behind the plate, and that's why he's there as a freshman. Hoffman takes the second one. Great plate awareness, too, as now there's two balls and one strike. Yeah, my only concern with um, Christian on the mound is that pitch count. We've definitely seen it rise up there as he's almost going to face every batter twice at this point. There is Hoffman, rolls over, going to see... If he can make the play over at third, that's Pascarella throwing over to first, over to Hilt, Hitlin. Pascarella over to Hitlin, gets him out. Hoffman with the ground out, the weak ground out to left field, or towards the left side of the infield over to Pascarella. Fielded cleanly by Pascarella, throwing over to Hitlin. Yeah, as we see um, Tristan behind us now, number four, the sophomore, he's fully tossing with um, Leibowitz, the bullpen catcher. So we'll see how if Aiden, come, Aiden Gray comes out for one more inning. Here is Christian there. On the mound, throws a first pitch right there to Benny Hegel. Saw a fastball there, first pitch, trying to convert, but he can't. It's a fastball fouled off to the right side. Yeah, Hegel flied out to center in his first at bat. That one um, about 10 feet out, outside the infield, caught in the last at bat. Um, we'll see if Hegel can get more on top of the ball, maybe get a line drive or ground ball through the infield. There, the fastball, that was up. Hegel left that one up. That's one ball, one strike for Benny Hegel. Bottom of the fourth here. One out, Rams trying to add more to their one, one, uh, one run lead. That one goes up a little bit high. Fastball up and away. Going to be taken by Hegel. Makes it two balls, one strike. You can see Christian's arm slot. It's getting a little lower, and that fastball is starting to rise on him a little more. That one hit on the ground to Anderson by Hegel. Can't beat that one out. That's a ground out. Second ground out of the inning. Two outs here, but the top of the New Canaan Rams order coming up. Sheffield followed by Somers and Benevento. And then Silva, these top four, Ben putting in work all day. We mentioned mainly Benevento, Silva, and Delicata, the one after him. But Somers looking to get back on the hot streak right now. Yeah, Sheffield over two with a ground ball and a backwards K. Uh, he's trying to turn the tables on Christian in this one. That one, an off-speed pitch inside to Sheffield. 
And you wonder, he didn't really look aggressive there on that first pitch. Maybe he was looking for the fastball and saw the spin and just left it, but puts him down. No balls, one strike. Christian ahead in the count. That one goes away, low and away from Christian. One Shut. ball, one strike, two outs. New Canaan up two to one. Christian with the delivery again, that lower arm slot, harder to read as this game goes along. Sheffield, that's a foul ball, top, goes off the top of the cage. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, those pitchers with those lower arm slots in the majors, we see guys like Max Scherzer, those fastballs seem to rise. IVB, induced vertical break, those fastballs seem to rise because of that lower arm slot. And here is Christian, there gets the fastball right by Sheffy. And that is his second strikeout of the day. 0 for 3 on the day, a tough day for the senior captain. Yeah, Gray going back out there for the Rams defense. I don't know what Nico Christian did before that last inning of work, but man, that was impressive. The fastball reaching velocities, I don't think we've seen from him today. The slider looking great in control, and now I think he can definitely come out for another inning with two ground balls and a strikeout there in that inning against some of the Rams' top hitters. And now we can see Aiden Gray staying into the game with the Rams bullpen still um, tossing out there. And up for the Vikings in the top of this fifth inning will be the nine hitter Rooney's gonna be up there. Rooney followed by the one hitter Akito who's two for two on the day. And then followed by the pitcher Christian. But you mentioned there is some action in the Rams bullpen right now with Tristan, uh, Tristan is gonna be in there. He pitched a bunch last year. He pit, faced a big game in Darien. He came in, I know he came in for relief against Darien. Tristan McAllister over there warming up, but Aiden Gray gonna continue to put in work. Top of the fifth inning here. Rams up two to one. The two and oh Rams hosting the three one West Hill Vikings and we're back into action here. Hoffman behind the dish and it's gonna be Rooney coming up Nine hitter on this Viking Viking squad. Yeah, Rooney struck out swinging in that first at bat. He's looked sound defensively out there at shortstop, so we we'll see if that defense can match the offense. And after that first kind of inning, right, and then uh, maybe one or two errors in that second, this game's been clean. Both fields kind of tightening things up after like, making the plays they need to make, and you've seen minimal errors from this Rams team after that rough first inning. Yeah, both teams maybe a little too more, a little too focused on the weather out there as both teams have played games in cold weather. There's a strike. But um, both teams have looked great defensively after that first inning. We've seen sound defense from both sides and great plays made by both sides on top of that. Gray made Rooney look silly there on the off-speed stuff. You saw from his reaction after, here's Gray on the delivery. Another off-speed pitch. That's strike three, gets him out on the K, looking backwards, K4 Gray. That's a sixth strikeout on the day. One out in the top of this fifth inning. Gray still working, pumping gas right now. Yeah, um, he's looked great into this, going into this top of the fifth inning. Only two innings left in this one, but we see Quito up now. He is um, one for two, because he, uh, he hit into a ground ball in that last at bat with a single before that. Keto's been on base twice after the error, and then he hit that single pass Silva, so he's shown that ability to hit, and when you're that one hitter, right, and you're the opposing team, you never want to let their top guy get on base, because that means they've got wheels, and they're definitely looking oh, to take go. bases, and they're over, and they're gonna say he went on the check swing, that's gonna make it 0-2. No balls, two strikes here. Gray still working. Yeah, we'll see if Gray decides to, to go with the fastball or the slider here. Um, I would. I would say that he's probably gonna go with the fastball up and in. That's been his bread and butter in this game so far. Here is Gray, 0-2, Mitch is a, his approach towards the mound and he strikes him out. Approach towards the plate, strikes him out there looking another backwards K for Gray. Two strikeouts looking in this third, in this fifth game and as the game goes on, right, you expect the hitters to start hitting off these top pitchers but Gray mixing it up after that first time through the order right very Fastball reliant, but then as the game's approach, right, he's gotten more comfortable with his off speed stuff and started working it in more. He throws ball one there, whoa. Uh, yeah, we can see Christian, um, Nico Christian, the pitcher. Um, you see, he's definitely still full of energy. He's batting right here now, and I would be surprised 
if he does not come out for this bottom of the fifth inning of work of, as we see Matt, Maddox Hoffman and Coach Gallo, the pitching coach, having a brief little chat before this next pitch. One ball here. Here is Hoffman behind the dish, Christian at the plate, Gray on the mound, two strikeouts looking in the top of this fifth inning. Two outs right now, Gray trying to close it out. First one, two, three inning on the day. That's a strike there delivered from Gray. One ball, one strike. The West Hill bullpen's gone silent now. It seems like Nico Christian uh, gonna stay in this game for at least another inning. Could that, see him finish out this game maybe. That one goes well. Ball two, two balls, one strike here. Top of the fifth. New Canaan still retaining that one up lead ball. Ground ball back up to Gray. Gray over to Soma. Gets the out. That's the first one, two, three inning on the day from either teams. And Gray gets out of that. That one, a low pitch inning. Exactly what you want to see if you're Coach Gallo, and he does just that. Gray gets out of the inning unscathed with no runs, no runners on base. Goes down one, two, three. And if you're the Vikings, right, you got to start lengthening these counts. You got to make Gray throw pitches. And then when Tristan comes in, you have to attack early. But the Rams offense going back out there. We'll see another at bat from Alex Benevento. But before that, we see Jack, Jack Somers trying to get back on. The hot streak, then Jack Somers followed by Benevento and Henry Silver, Silva, otherwise known as Hank. Yeah, I can see the heart of the Rams order. It's contact and power everywhere between these three hitters. And I think Scott, I mean, I think Nico Christian, um, he's gonna have to work around maybe Benevento and Silva as they've been the two guys to hurt him so far in this one. But we'll see his approach here. Yeah, Christian will go back out there on the mound for the bottom of the fifth inning. Gray kind of countering Gray, saying, whatever you can do, I can do better, right? Coming out, we saw him take a breath. Everyone kind of held their breath for a moment there as he went down in the top of the bottom of the second. It took a minute, but then came back out. And now he's in to the bottom of the fifth inning. Rams offense trying to pile up more runs, increase that one-run lead. Because as this game goes on, right, there's always a possibility of the Vikings getting a fluke run. Yeah, we've seen the defense become more sound, but you know, one error, one ground ball reaching through the infield or even a walk issued by these Rams, um, it could lead to this game getting slightly out of hand, but we've seen them manage it before and they've managed it well today. Christian gonna be back out there on the mound as we mentioned, but Jack Somers stepping into the box, trying to erase his performance today. I believe he's one for three and he'll be up there. Number 13, Jack Somers, one of the 14 seniors on this team. Again, as we mentioned, stepping into the box against Christian here early on. Bottom of the fifth inning. That one, a first pitch strike by uh, Tristan. By Christian. Christian throws the first pitch strike past Somers. Good start for Christian. This here's the second one. That one's a little bit off the plate. That one outside a fastball. Another fastball after that first pitch fastball. There's one for a ball. That one makes it one and one. One ball, one strike, no outs. That one roped by Somers, but that one's a foul ball. Goes into the top of the screen. And here is Somers stepping in. 0-2, no balls, or one ball, sorry. My apologies, one ball, one two ball, strikes. Two He's got to tighten up and try to get on base because the guys following him can definitely drive him in in Benevento and Silva. Yeah, a lot of power, a lot of safety behind him in that lineup. See if he uses it to his advantage. Silva takes, or Somers takes that one a good eye on a high fastball that was a little bit higher than the letters. He takes it 2 2, two balls, two strikes, no outs. Bottom of the fifth, delivery by Christian. That one up again, three balls, two strikes. Yeah, we saw that, saw that Frisbee slider of his. That was up around Somer's eye levels. Trying to get the swing and miss. We'll see if he goes with the fastball slider or change up in this th full count. Somer's full count there. Somer's takes the walk there. I believe he might have gotten clipped a little bit, but shook it right off, walked over, ran over to first base. Puts a runner on first for Alex Benevento. He's eight for eight on the year. Yeah, the West Hill bullpen now tossing. We see Logan Para, the lefty, tossing with the bullpen catcher, Matthew Quaglino. We'll see if um, Christian only has one more inning left of him, left in him in this one. 
Here is Benevento, the Brown commit, D1 commit. Christian checks. Somers right over there. Somers shown his ability to steal. Got a lot of stolen bases last year. Always deadly on the base path. And definitely, if you can get a stolen base here right, put you just one more step closer to home. Benevento yeah. taking out another one, almost like a pick and choose situation for Benevento, right? You know they're not gonna throw you anything down the middle or anything close. And Christian definitely avoiding Benevento in his fourth at bat. Yeah, this one definitely a little bit of a stretch, but only a single and a home run. Only five bases away from the cycle. He already has five bases accumulated with that triple and double of his today. So correction, Benevento is seven for seven on the season. Hasn't gotten out once as well as those three walks. So he's been on base all 10 times. He stepped up to the dish. Silva, Henry Silva, the Colby commit, takes the first ball way outside. Not even a question of whether or not to swing. He takes that one. Ball outside. Hank takes that one. Heads up. That one, another parking lot victim side to take out Christian. Christian having a great day so far. You mentioned he's only given up two runs, and I believe only one of those might have been earned if I'm not mistaken. He's only given up six hits. If I'm West Hill, I'm leaving him in like they are doing. He got himself into that situation. He has shown time before in this game that he can get out of these tough situations. So I think bringing in a pitcher with this situation and this type of hitter up, although it is lefty-lefty, so maybe that was the case to bring Para into the game. Lefty-lefty is much, much harder for Delicata up at the plate, but they leave Christian in there and we'll see if he can get out of this mess that he created. And a clean slate for Christian as the o, o O offering. That's going to be a ball. One ball and no strikes from Christian. And now he's going to have one ball, no strikes. Bases loaded here for the Rams. Adrian Delicata, the sophomore, batting in the... Been able to make the throw to get Somers out. So I think that was a smart heads-up play, actually, to let that one drop. Trust his pitcher to get out of it here. Definitely a smart play, right? Because then you eliminate the play at the plate and you allow that third run to drop for New Canaan. Delicata here, 2-2 two -two count. That one, he gets K to looking. An opportunity to rise and unfortunately he falls. To the backwards K, a strikeout looking. One out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. New Canaan up 2-1. to one. And that's going to bring up senior, Kath, senior Will Lankford. And Langford having a senior moment for the senior here. You mentioned he's been a solid piece for this Rams team. Well, it's been a tough day for him with two, with two strikeouts swinging. But you know the Rams would hate to strand these guys here as there's one out in the bottom of the fifth. Base is loaded and they hope to uh, bust this one open here. Here's Langford delivery by Christian. That one low strike gets him there. One ball, one strike on the pitch from Langford, or on from Christian over to Langford. You saw the first pitch off speed, then the fastball. What do you think he's gonna go back to here? I think he's gonna go back to the fastball. And he goes right back to the fastball, Langford late. One ball, two strikes, Langford up at the plate. An opportunity to drive home his fellow senior friends. Uh, Jack, Jack Somers right, Benevento at second, and then Henry Silva at first. Will Langford has an opportunity here. We'll see if he can take advantage of it. Yeah, we've seen the inconsistent zones behind the plate by this umpire. Um, if I'm the pitcher here, I would want to expand the zone, try to get um, Langford, who looks uncomfortable in the box, swinging. Langford, ball on the ground. We'll see. That one goes foul. That one was stopped by the glove of that third baseman, Pascarella, over there on the corner. And if you're Langford, right, you're trying to hit everything on the ground. You don't want to pop up. You don't want to pop up on the ball. If you can uh, fly out to deep center, right, you can score that run. But uh, ideally, it's a hit and run situation where you're trying to keep the ball on the ground. Yeah, with one ball, two strikes here. He's still pitchers in the control seat here. First baseman on the grass as Langford uses his second timeout. Langford takes another time. That should have been a hit and struck out swinging in this one. Here is Jake Soma at the dish. And pick off to second base, that one close. You gotta be careful when you throw that ball right. You don't wanna throw the ball away. That was the pickoff attempt by Christian. Luckily, saved by the second baseman. I believe actually the shortstop, Rooney was able to catch the ball there, prevent that runner from second. 
Soma fouls one off as the count goes to 0-1. I'm surprised that they're leaving Nico Christian in here in this one. We saw four runs come across. It seems like the walls are caving in a little bit for West Hill, but still they're trusting in their veteran ace. And we've seen the bullpen getting up with the lefty Logan, uh, Logan Para, but they're gonna stick with Cobb. The there's a balk there. Runners advance to second and third. We're trying to figure out what happened there. Balk or not. It's definitely a situation though, right, where you live and die by your ace. So you're gonna live and die by Christian here. Obviously shown by the fact that they kept him in. Even after he loaded the bases up, he kept him in. He's played really well today so far. Unfortunately gave up that hit to Langford that went to left field, driving in two, and then giving up a couple big hits to Benevento. Two doubles and a triple on the day, but then look at the caliber of Alex Benevento. Yeah, um, no balk is called. Apparently it was timeout or some sort of confusion there between coach of the Rams, Anthony Bloss, and the umpire at home plate. So still runners at first and second for Jake Soma. Jake Soma up at the plate. No balls, one strike, one out, bottom of the fifth there. That one's up in the air. That one's caught in left field. Another great play by Gratuso. Catches that one, keeps the runners at first and second, but then again, great job by Soma to get some contact on that ball. Yeah, it's now up to Maddox Hoffman uh, to bring in these runs for the Rams. There's two outs, runners on first and second. The freshman with another situation right where he can drive in a couple runs and prove why he deserves a spot on this team. Back up that spot, especially in the hitting category as he takes that one. That was a slider, a strike. No balls, one strike, two outs. And my apologies, that was actually a ball. One ball, no strikes, and two outs here for the Rams. Runner on first and second. Langford over at first. And Henry Silva at second. Yeah, we'll see if they try to get these runners in motion. Good speed um, with Silva and the football player Langford at first. We'll see if they try. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Christian gonna deliver the fourth pitch of the at bat to Hoffman. Hoffman there takes that one, that one nowhere close to that box called the strike zone which Christian can't seem to find right now. Another ball thrown by Christian. New Canaan up four, two, one. Bottom of the fifth, two outs, Christian. Gonna deliver the pitch to Hoffman. Has to be a strike. And that one's nowhere close, another pitch. That one's high, up and away. As we see a substitution and Benny Hegel has been substituted out of the game. And I think this is just a boss kind of decision, right? Get some underclassmen, switch them out, get some reps for each and every underclassman that he's trying to develop, right? Because when these seniors leave, he's gonna have to replace them. Thomas Schulman coming in for, coming in for Hegel, and then Luke Bopp is gonna be a pinch runner at first for Maddox Hoffman, who's the catcher. So that one makes sense. Bopp goes for Hoffman as a pinch runner. And we'll see what they do with the lineup. But here's Thomas Schulman, number 11. Digging in for the Rams, no balls, no strikes, and two outs. Runners on first and second, Henry Silva and Luke Bopp, both guys with lots of speed. Uh, yeah, I think Hoffman's really helped himself out to make a case for this everyday catcher position that he's been fighting for. You know, that batting average hasn't really increased today, but that on-base percentage with these two walks has taken a huge jump up, and I think he's proved himself that he sh should be the everyday catcher. And there is Shulman, gets a little bit of that one. That ball fielded by Rooney over to first, over to Hitlin, Rooney to Hitlin, Ramstrand, two more runners. That's Shulman making the final out, stranding Luke Bopp and Henry Silva, but Rams capitalize off the loaded bases there in that bottom of the fifth inning. 
New Canaan goes up four to one after plating both Benevento and Somers. Uh, we can see a new pitcher here as Tristan McAllister, the young sophomore, is coming into the game. Um, we seen we saw him in the bullpen behind us. We saw him with that great fastball. The control is on point, as well as that curveball and slider. We also saw him throw the changeup a few times in that bullpen. We'll see which pitches he chooses to throw out there on this in this first appearance out now. Yeah, and then another such substitution right in left field or right field. My apologies is going to be Shulman out in right, taking the place of Benny Hegel. Maddox still in the game at catcher after getting uh, pinched ran for. Bottom, uh, top of the six, my apologies here. Top of the six here at Mead Park. Definitely cooled off a little bit, probably sitting around the 50 degree mark. 50 degree mark here at Mead Park, New Canaan. Up four to one against the West Hill Vikings. New Canaan coming in, coming in to this game, putting up 22 runs in two games. And West Hill on the other side, three and one, looking for that fourth win. And they're going to have to capitalize off the pitching change here in McAllister. They're going to have to get to him quickly, put up a couple runs. Yeah, we're going to see uh, three, four, and five of the order, and all of them are without a hit. We've we've seen three strikeouts reach on an error and a double play between the three, four, five. This is the, supposed to be the heart of the order where all the power comes from, but we've seen a lack of everything coming from the three, four, five holes of this West Hill Vikings lineup. See if they make a change, any pinch hitters out there. Three, four, five. It's gonna be Garris, Hitlin, and Anderson coming in for the Vikings. Three, four, five. You mentioned the meat of the order hasn't really provided as it normally does for this Vikings team. And this is an opportunity to capitalize off the pitching change again, to get to McAllister quickly and take advantage after Gray had his had himself a day in the five innings that he pitched. Yeah, he's in line for the win there. And McAllister, a much different pitcher. He's a much more control guy than Gray is of power, but you cannot sleep on that fastball of his. The velocity does not match the size of the pitcher as that one sneaks in for a strike. There's the fastball by McAllister on the outside part of the plate, gets a strike one. There's the curveball, loses a bit of control there as that one looked like it was going towards uh, going towards Garris' head for a second, but slides inside enough. Top of the sixth, your new Canaan up 4-1. McAllister there with the delivery, one ball, one strike. Now and no outs in the top of the sixth. Here's McAllister on the delivery, throws the curveball, makes him look silly there. As Garris was expecting the fastball, met with the curveball, not even putting a single piece of uh, aluminum on that one. Missed it completely. That one in the dirt, good block though by Maddox Hoffman, staying in front of that one, McAllister. I have to say thank you to his catcher for that one after the game. Yeah, that was a change up that was about 60 feet and not, didn't get those six inches, but that was a little short of the plate. Great block by Hoffman. McAllister goes fastball, ground ball over. Silva not able to get to that one. McAllister puts a runner on first as Silva not able to get to, the, to that ground ball. And Garris reaches his first hit of the night. Uh, yeah, got to feel good for him. New pitcher, he got his, he's got his chance to, um, you know, get away from the power uh, fastball and slider combination from Gray. Got more of a control freak on the mound in McAllister and he got a base hit there up the middle. And it's gonna be Hitlin up here with an opportunity as he's early on that one. Early on the fastball, fouls it off to the right. And that makes it a no ball, one strike count with no outs and a runner on first. Garris on first after that single to the left side. Yeah, we'll see if they try to get um, the right fielder in motion out there. My apologies, it's not Garris, it's Harrowies over there at first base. Thank you to the West Hill coach that's staying right beside us. But Harrowies over at first. And uh, Henry, how many hits have been to the left side of this infield today? I don't think we've seen a single hit from the Vikings to the right side. Catch by Hoffman, gonna gun him at. 
Second and gets him on the throw out. Man, that is a beautiful rocket of an arm. That throw was on the money. A great tag by Silva. And that throw was just incredible by the freshman catcher. You know, the, the defense you know is there, but the arm, the arm talent is incredible by the freshman. The bat will follow, and this kid is going to be an all-star soon. What a play there by Hoffman to get the runner at second. That was Harris at second trying to take a bag against the freshman. And the freshman says no, throws him out. But the perfectly placed ball right over to Silva. Made the tag, tag, laid the tag. Made a little bit, and my apologies, it is Anderson. Remington Anderson up at the disc. Dish, you have two outs, no balls, two strikes here. McAllister working quickly in the bottom of this sixth inning, getting to the Vikings batters, top of the sixth inning, getting to the Vikings batters quickly. Yeah, I think McAllister, I think he should go with that curveball here. We've seen a lot of swings and misses. We'll see what he tries to go to and see if he pulls the string on one. McAllister throws that one, that one. Anderson just gets the tip of the bat on. And still, no balls, two strikes here. Yeah, McAllister is going to be in line for the hold this inning and then possibly the save next inning if they still lead by three runs going into the top of the seventh. McAllister with the curve ball there. That one just a little bit low. Below the knees of Anderson. That's going to make it one ball, two strikes. Definitely a smart pitch, though, to try to get him swing. Yeah, one ball, two strikes, and we'll see what he goes to. And McAllister okay. hits him. After going from 0-2, throws one Fastball, loses a little bit of a grip, hits Anderson right in the back. Yeah, obviously no intention there. It's a one-two count. Just loses the grip there. That's the first hit by pitch we've seen today. And now West Hill gets a runner on. We'll see. I don't think they're going to try to pull him in motion because they know the cannon of an arm that's sitting behind the dish there. But McAllister also has a great pickoff move. The two so up, and he, Hoffman throws over to Soma at first, trying to get Gertuso. Not able to get him, but again, that Maddox Hoffman, that pop time is just so quick. You can't lose your, you can't be caught daydreaming there on the base path, otherwise Hoffman will get you out of here. Gaster throws that one. That one being the first strike of the count. One ball, one strike. Great frame there. Great frame there by Hoffman. That one uh, a little closer to the ankles than the knees, but he drags it up and he gets the call from the umpire. Definitely a batter-friendly umpire out there. And there's the second pitch. Fielded, Langford tried to field that one. Runner on third, the batter, off just a ground ball, just a simple ground ball. And that makes it 4-2-2. Yeah, you gotta let, if you're the third baseman there, you gotta let your shortstop make that play. He's at short for a reason. He's got the range and he's got the arm to make that play. As we see uh, a little bit of a break in between these two batters. Um, with Zachary Voros, the uh, the catcher in this one, coming up to the plate. Oh, my bad, my bad, Actually my bad. a pinch hitter. And this is a pinch hitter. This is Matthew Quaglino up at the dish. Hey. That ball's taken there by the Vikings. And you mentioned most of their runs here have come off of errors. I believe both of their runs are off of plays where the Rams committed errors. So they could have a clean game. And that one does not go against Tristan McAllister as he throws another one. Two balls, no strikes, and two outs here. Yeah, we see the lefty, first lefty McAllister gets the face here in this one. And that's a curve ball that makes him look silly. There in the guts to throw the curve ball on a 2-0 and count. He does just that, gets him with the strike. Two balls, one strike. There, gets him past him. And another one, that one, not even sure what he saw, but some off-speed stuff from McAllister, and that's what he has to rely on, right? He's not throwing 90 or high 80s in high school, so McAllister definitely built up that repertoire of secondary pitches that got movement. And he throws that one, gets him out. That's a curve ball, gets him out. And that one closes the sixth inning. We can see a new pitcher up on the mound. Uh, we've seen him l warming up for about four or five innings now. It's Logan Parra, the big lefty. So we're gonna see how these uh, Rams batters react to the lefty on the mound. We'll see if there are any more 
defensive substitutions out there. The Rams are gonna put in some work here. You mentioned they had the bases loaded last inning, able to capitalize off of that, find themselves up four to two here in the bottom of the sixth inning. We're gonna have one more inning to play after this. Wessel's gonna have one final chance and we'll see what how many runs they have to make up. But you mentioned this a pitching substitution by Parra. Parra is gonna be in there for the Vikings. Parra is gonna be out there on the mound and starting out there for the Rams is gonna be Jack Sheffield and he definitely hasn't had a day that he wants to remember. But now he has an opportunity to capitalize, right? And in baseball, it's not so much the amount of times you capitalize, but it's what moments you capitalize in. And definitely has a moment here to get on base, force some pressure on Para, and see what he can do. Yeah, Para has the chance to face Delicata, the lefty up on this one, but he's going to face some power righties, um, especially with Benevento. Three for three. He has seven bases on the day. Um, he scored two of the Rams' runs. And, you know, it's definitely tough. I think it was smart for them to not throw him into fire with bases loaded, no outs in the last inning. I think it's smart for them to keep uh, their main pitcher, Nico Christian, up in there. But now it's a new inning, new opportunity, and they're putting the new pitcher, Logan Parra, in. Yeah, Nico Christian's day is done after five innings. You mentioned the D1 commit had a pretty good showing today. His defense definitely made a couple of errors there, and then he loaded the bases in the last inning. The coaches let him work out of it, and that's what you see, right? You stay behind your ace, you back him up, and you just let him work out of jams, especially in this early season, right? It's the early part of the Sheffield trying to get on the, on the hits board for the Rams today. He's 0 for 3 with a backwards K, a ground out, and a strikeout looking. So two strikeouts looking and a ground out for Sheffield. We'll see if he can change. Fake the bunt there. Parra throws the first pitch strike. One strike, no balls, and no outs. The beginning of this bottom of the sixth inning here at Mead Park, here on the NCTV 78 YouTube channel. Over to fielded by Rooney. Rooney over to first, over to Hitlin. And Sheffield thought he beat it out. The entire Rams bench. And he did, he did beat it out, my apologies. Sheffield beats out that ground ball. The speed being shown from the legs of Jack Sheffield, who got some looks for college baseball, but decided not to pursue it. But here he is, finds himself on first base, Rams up four to two, bottom of the sixth inning. Para, the reliever, came in for Christian and Somers here, up at the dish. There's the pickoff move, the lefty move. You gotta be careful of when Every year on base at first base, especially. Para picks off towards first. Sheffield gets back. And here's Somers up at the dish. Five. Somers faked the bunt. That one looked like it almost hit one of our cameras there. You guys got the best look at it at home. That ball way up and in. Sheffield faked the bunt there. Again, his second time this at bat, one ball, two balls, and no strikes, and no outs here. Jack Sheffield off an infield single over at first, Para on the mound. Somers asked for time there. <laughs> Somers, he's, he's 0 for 2 with a walk. He's struck out looking in his first plate appearance, and he flat out to center field in his second. Took that, he walked in that third plate appearance, didn't come around to score, however. Here is Somers, Bunce running, racing down that line. Made a fielding error there from the catcher over to Hitlin. Somers over to second, Sheffield down at first. And Somers definitely probably could have gone to third base if he wanted to. Sheffield goes home. And that's what happens when you put the ball in play. An error by the West Hill defense. That's their third error on the day. And that's not Para's fault there, right? But that's an error by the Vikings. Somers goes over to second on the bunt after the throw away. Sheffield goes home. And bad news for you Vikings fans, right? The guy coming up has two doubles and a triple on the day. His, day. His name is Alex Benevento. And he's ready to put in some more work. 
Yeah, Pascarella, I think, should have just put that, ate that one, put it in his pocket, making that throw just put his team in more risk, made the deficit even bigger as it was a bad throw, and the first baseman out there couldn't scoop it. Okay. We saw Somers go to second, definitely could have gone to third, but Sheffield, more importantly, came around to score, and the Rams extend their lead uh, two to five as they issue the intentional walk there on Benevento. They did choose to intentionally walk Alex Benevento. There, send him to first base, and then at second, you have Jack Somers, and Sheffield came home, making it 5-2-2. Two, two. One more run in the sixth inning after they gave up the run in the top of this inning off an error. They're treating the Benevento is, like he's Barry Bonds out there. Well, you have to after he has two doubles and a triple yeah. on the day. Para pitching to Silva now. First pitch strike. One, No balls, one strike. Doesn't get much easier with this next batter. You got you got Benevento's clone on the at the plate, you know. Both hit, both incredible hitters, both incredible fielders, but we'll see if they made the right choice in walking Benevento to face Silva. Para over there, Silva takes that one. That one way outside. One ball, one strike. Number 25 at the dish. Para trying to work out of things, and you gotta get an out here before you get too deep into this mess. I think that walk was probably more about setting up the double play opportunity than it was the batter, but you know, uh, when you have that great of a batter, um, whenever they walk him, it, you're gonna think it's because of him. And there's the pickoff move, this time two second, but Parr decides to hold the ball, not throw it, and not risk throwing that ball into the outfield and sending Somers over to third. Silva digging in, one ball, one strike, and Adrian Delicata on deck. Para decides to step off there. Step off the rubber, Para. Now gets back on one ball, one strike. No outs, and he does it again. Looks like a little bit of miscommunication be between Varas and Para. As we see West Hill, um, they're getting another pitcher up and throwing. One, one here. One ball, one strike. Henry Silva in the box here. And no outs. Runner on first and second. Ducks on the pond. As Boss normally says, ducks on the pond for Silva. He's done a great job of bringing in RBIs this season. He's already got eight on the year. And just two and a half games. We'll see if Para gets to finish the inning. We see Ethan Dianis, the shifty right-hander, toss him with the bullpen catcher behind us. I think they should let Para finish this um, at least next two batters, because especially with Delicata the lefty up, they definitely want that lefty-lefty matchup. Here is Silva digging in, fouls that one off. That one, lots of power on that one, just couldn't extend that front arm out and straight got under that one. Yeah, that exit velo, even though that launch angle's straight up, but that exit velocity definitely in the upper 80s, 90s. Two balls, two strikes. And no outs here in the bottom of the sixth. The Rams up five to two here against the Vikings. New Canaan hosting West Hill, West Hill here at Mead Park. Parle looks behind towards second, then delivers the pitch to Silva. Off speed stuff, catches the outside part of the plate, gets him looking a backward K for Silva. Definitely did not like that pitch. That one goes off the off outside part of the plate and again you get that lefty lefty matchup which you rarely see it nowadays in Connecticut high school baseball but you got par against Delicata here for a matchup one out after he struck out Henry Silva which came after the intentional walk of Alex Benevento so you got Benevento on first then you got Somers on second par delivers that one inside to Delicata, and if you're Delicata, you gotta expect that he's just gonna turn the back if anything comes inside, right? And just take it. Yeah, um, it was looking like a good move to send the intentional walk to Benevento facing Silva, as they now have two outs with um, one out with a runner on first and second. Paro with the delivery there to Delicata. That one's a strike right at the knees. That one lands inside the box called the strike zone. Two balls, one strike, and one out here. Yeah. 
Adrian Delicata here digging in. Two balls, one strike, and one out. Gets that one a little bit early there on the swing. Throws it, hits it right at Mr. DeVito, Jay DeVito. One, ball, one of the strikes. assistant coaches, one of the talented assistant coaches on this Rams team. He played some collegiate baseball and now sharing that experience with this new Canaan Rams high school team. One, two, one, two. Here is Para on the mound. Delicata digging in again. Runners on first and second, so some RBI opportunities if you can weave one through the infield and into that outfield grass. Pitch by Para. That one almost hits Delicata. And that one makes it. Two balls, two strikes. Two, two balls and two strikes, so a 2-2 count for Delicata. Yeah, we're definitely seeing the complicated matchup between the lefty-lefty. Uh, Paro has been getting through. His pitch count's been pretty low, but this matchup versus Delicata is definitely um, a struggle for the pitcher and the batter. They're both not used to it. You can tell Paro is just looking, right? And that's exactly why he has to throw over to third. And Safe. Somers gets in safe, I believe, over there at third. The throw from the catcher for us over to Pascarella, not able to get him. And sh Somers takes that stolen base. Benevento moves over to second after the throw over. So now runners really in scoring position with the runner on second and third. Yeah, it's a great heads up play because now grounder or pop or fly ball into center or right field uh, will definitely score a run. There's the delivery ground ball over to first as you mentioned. Feel they're trying to get it over to first over home. Soma, Somers does the right job, D gets off the bag right away once he saw that ball. He's being taken by the first baseman, that was Hitlin who fielded the ground ball cleanly, then went over to first, tagged the bag. He tags that one, gets the one out. And now there is two outs. That brings up Will Langford with another oppor opportunity to bring in a fellow teammate, this time Benevento on third. Bottom of the sixth, two outs. Yeah, Will I think, Langford up. I think this could be Paro's last batter face um, with Ethan Deannis, um tossing behind us. He's starting to ramp up, and I think if Langford can drive in this next run, uh, make it seven to two, I think that West Hill gonna go to the new pitcher, just try to drown this game out and, and forget it after this one. Exactly, six to two. A game if you're West Hill, right? It's filled with errors. Par with the high fastball there, not able to clip any part of the zone. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Benevento on third. Rams up six to two in the bottom of the sixth. And here is Para on the mound, winds up and throws. That one catches the top part of the zone, some off speed stuff there. Yeah, the curve ball, that's not a spot you really want to locate it up in the zone to the opposite handed hitter. If you keep doing that, one of those will get taken for a ride over the fence. Definitely left that one a little bit hanging there, the fastball. Nowhere close to the zone, the bench. Makes the sound, but again, you know, that pitch wasn't even close. Maybe that's why he's moving towards the off-speed stuff. Not able to locate his fastball. That one goes up and away. Two balls, one strike, and two outs. Will Langford, the senior, up at bat. That one, good job by Will Langford to leave that one. That one goes off the plate again. Ball three, one strike, two outs. Parr definitely starting to lose some control. Uh, we'll see if they make a move for anyone else on this one with Langford. Um, he broke that hitless streak of his. Again, that backstop doesn't allow it, especially on the pitch from Parra, which was a high fastball that came right back to the catcher, back to Varos. Yeah, this backstop has definitely played a big factor. If it was maybe even just a foot longer, we could have seen a, maybe one or two more run score. I mean, there are some schools with backstops like 10 feet. That one driven by Lankford into the left side, gets the RBI, Benevento comes in. And Lankford's gonna come in, goes from second to home. That was a drive by Soma, my apologies. Soma drives the ball to the left field. That was a great hit from Jake Soma, getting back on that hot streak that we talked about. And that's, Jake Silva drives that's exactly the ball. why you get Lankford in motion, first pitch, getting him up to second base. So that single, that would have just advanced Lankford third, it scored one run, but because Lankford was in motion, that pitch, pitcher drew before, second and third, and that single to left field, which would just score one, scores both. So that's great heads up play by the Rams. 
Benevento found, or my apologies, Soma found the gap there in left field. A pickoff move by Parra, unsuccessful. Now puts Maddox Hoffman, the catcher, a freshman sensation, up at the plate. This time not behind it, but instead in the batter's box on the left side as he's a righty. Here's Parra going to deliver. This pitch Rams find themselves up 9-8-2. to eight to two. Now with two outs, bottom of the sixth, just adding to their lead in this sixth inning. Yeah, Hoffman, uh, he's 0 for 1, but with two walks today. So that on-base percentage climbing up, that batting average staying relatively the same. As we can see, a previous pitcher for the Rams, Tristan McAllister, he's just getting, he's just staying loose to come in for this top of the seventh. No longer a safe situation as they're leading by well more than three runs. And Maddox Hoffman pops that one up. That one's going over to right field, fielded by Garez uh, over in right field. Fields that one, that's a fly ball, easy routine. Fly ball, you saw, you mentioned McAllister was over there inside the pen warming up after that long bottom of the sixth inning where the Rams were on the offensive side of the ball for much of that sixth inning. Hoffman, that's probably the last at bat for the Rams this game as they lead eight to two in the end of the sixth. You know, one more clean inning or just not even, it doesn't have to be clean, just don't allow five more, five or six more runs and you win this game. So McAllister, he looked great in that first inning. That curveball made some hitters look like middle schoolers out there at the plate, but uh, McAllister looking great, just needs three more outs for the Rams to win this one against uh, West Hill. Yeah, you mentioned that. Top of the sixth inning was pretty clean for McAllister. The sophomore, again, he got some experience last year as a freshman when they needed pitchers. Came up, and I remember coming to watch him close out the game against Darianne, which is one of the biggest matchups of the season for the Rams just because of the crowd that comes out and watches. There were by far the most fans at that game than there were all season, but lots of Rams fans came out, and McAllister delivered closing out that game in style. And we'll see if he can get another one here, see if he can close out this game in style. You mentioned the Rams up 8-2, so the Vikings definitely have some work to do. It's not impossible, but they'd have to put up six runs in the top of the seventh Rams. McAllister trying to close things out, put the Rams at 3-0, and and would make it three dominant wins for the Rams, although there definitely are some things, if you're Coach Bloss, you want to clean up, like some base running issues, and even some of those errors in the first inning, and then that error from Sheffield which you just decide to not throw the ball as Maddox Hoffman throws that ball down to second. Going to bring out the first batter for West Hill. And that'll be Pascarella, the eight hitter. Coming out followed by Rooney. And then Keto. Kyle with Tristan McAllister make it 3-0 on the season with an 8-2 victory over West Hill. That's if they can close out these final three batters. Ball over to Langford. Interesting play from Langford over to Soma. Couldn't get him. Definitely Tough weird play. way to field yeah. The ground ball, it looked like he was playing maybe just a step far over off the bag and couldn't get over to the line to field that ball cleanly. Yeah, that's not a shift that you normally see for a righty, expecting to play a little bit more towards the line, but he had to go all the way to his right to field that he backhands it, and he kind of stumbled coming out of the um, fielding the ball and the throw just offline, so there's a runner on base. That's exactly what Westhill wanted. There's a runner on base, some life for the West Hill offense. That's Pascarella on first base. Now it's Rooney, the nine hitter, number 13, stepping into the box against Tristan McAllister. Top of the seventh, Rams up eight to two. No outs, ball delivered. That's a strike from McAllister. Way to start things off. One ball, one strike Rooney for the sophomore. Rooney, two strikeouts, one looking, one swinging. McAllister trying to add one more to that or even a ground ball double play would be better. That one skied up into the right field by Rooney over towards the likes of Thomas Schulman in the vicinity, and he makes that play. That's an easy fly out. Great job. Great defensive play, routine play from Thomas Schulman, who came in for uh, Benny Heagle. That's Benny Heagle out in right field making that play. My apology. This, that is Benny Heagle out there, that right field. The sophomore. We talked about he's in our TV class actually. Such a great guy just to talk. Maddox hopping over, almost gets him. But that ball was dropped by Soma and that was Pascarella scrambling back to the bag. You mentioned the guy up right now has two hits, has on base twice this game. It's gonna be Keto up, the leadoff hitter for this Vikings team. 
as we see a jammed finger by Pasquarello, the base runner at first when he dove back. Um, something would have something bent that obviously should not have. And the Callister, I expect to be throwing because this could take a little bit longer. I expect Tristan to uh, pitch low in the zone to, for the rest of this at bat. One out, runner on first. Your best friend would be to get a double play. One ball, no strikes here. And a one out here at Mead Park as the sun setting a little bit. Definitely not the same look that we saw entering, but this is such a pretty venue right here at Mead Park. Such a pretty field that we're able to experience, especially tonight on a cold spring afternoon. There's Sheffield out, and that's a ball smoked by Keto into left field. Keto gonna round first and over to second. Not able to complete the transition over to third. Get the runner out that ball. The relay over to Langford. Not able to tag out Pascarella. The speed there going from first to third on the ball that was sky. The line, the ball driven out to left field over to that corner. Yeah, Quinto took that ball for a ride. That fastball just kind of in no man's land. Not too high, not too low. That's a pitcher's paradise. As we see a lefty, uh, the pinch hitter, that's Logan Para. Not a pinch hitter, but came in for the pitcher. As if you're Tristan uh, McAllister on the mound now, just get out. Pop up, the fly ball even. One run will not hurt you whatsoever. So just trying to build out and try to get out of this game. There's the pitch, the strike by Tristan McAllister. Gets ahead early in this count. No, no balls, one strike and one out here against the batter, the two hitter, Christian, who's still in there batting after his performance today, hitting. Skies that one almost caught by Langford, goes off the glove, and that'll just play it one as they decide to hold Keto at third, but great hit, another great piece of hitting there from the two hitter. Yeah, that's Para now, uh, the lefty pitcher, lefty batter. Uh, it was a great play by Langford. He almost he fully extended, almost got that ball. But now there's runners on the corners with one run scored this inning. One run scored here for the Vikings after they played it a run last inning too as well. But then they succeeded four runs to the Rams in that bottom of the sixth inning. Here's McAllister on the delivery. The curveball makes him look silly yet again. And that was without the precursor fastball. Instead just goes right to the curveball, makes him look pretty silly as he whiffs. whiffs. That's Garris. And the swing and miss, and another one, that yeah. one inside, pushing maybe a little bit off yeah. the plate. But that one was definitely close, questionable call inside. Just maybe a smidge too much inside. That makes it 1-1 with one out. All ones on the scoreboard. Yeah. The 5-2 pitcher making the grown man with the beard looking, the, looking like the child out there now. And that was Another strike, a fastball there delivered by Garez there from McAllister. One, two count, there's a curveball. Could have been expected over to the likes of Jack Sheffield. He'll catch that one. And that'll plate Quito. No chance to get him, of course. But they keep the runner at first. They keep, uh, they keep Paro at first from moving over to second advancing. And instead, they secede the one run right. Now that makes it eight, two, three. That's McAllister, you're fine with that. As another run comes along to score, but uh, that's another out. You're just trying to build out here. As there's two out in the top of the seven. That ball taken by Hitlin. Uh, taken by Hit Hitlin. And you can't be taking pitches right now, right? You have to be in that attack mindset. Two outs. And this is what the game relies on. The score is eight to four. Our apologies, not eight to three. Some technical difficulties. Again, top of the seventh, no balls, two strikes. McAllister trying to close it out here. This is Hitlin with the fate of the game on the line here. Two strikes, no balls. And that one could have rung him up. But the up doesn't call it, calls it a little bit inside, maybe a little bit low. 
for his liking, 8-4 here. Top of the seventh, one ball, two strikes and two outs. The next strike will be the dagger. That ball on the ground over to Soma. He's gonna close that one up, Soma over to, Somers over to Soma, closes this one out. Rams win eight to four here on this Tuesday afternoon, April the 9th. Rams win eight to four. And Henry, what a game for the new Canaan Rams. Get back on that winning streak. Now they find themselves at three and oh after two offensive outbursts. They have another one where they come in and win eight to four. Definitely could have been closer and definitely could have even been expanded, right? If the Rams would have hit a little bit better, but they saw Benevento uh, hit two doubles and a triple and then get the walk. So he still remains perfect. Something definitely to watch how long that streak goes. Oh uh, yeah, the Rams now three and zero. West Hill falls to three and two on that two game losing streak. But you know, it was a great game by the Rams today. The pitching looked incredible. Obviously four runs, they don't really matter. Two of them came in garbage time. But pitching for West Hill definitely became an issue. We saw their ace on the mound, but we saw the bullpen start to give them up. And you know, I think it was just a great game by both sides. The Rams looked really solid. They looked like the more professional team out there. And Jack, John, those are my final thoughts. Yeah, and this is right. This is a good start for the Rams for conference play in terms of FCX. They missed qualifying for FCX last year, but this is definitely a good start, right? They start off one and zero in the FCX. They win their first game against West Haven or West Hill. My apologies. And then the next game they go off is another game where they're not playing in the league. They play at New Fairfield. And then for West Hill, they move on to go face Trumbull in another FCAC matchup. They'll look to get back on the winning streak. Now they move to 3-2, and two, but look to move to 4-2 and two the next time they go out and play that time at Trumbull. So they can't go on the road yet again after losing to New Canaan 8-4. to four. And that'll be all fi our final thoughts here from Mead Park. But before we go, we'd like to thank everyone who helped out with this production. Uh, our producer, Anav Sahai, we got on camera Robbie Williams, as well as AJ on replay, Mr. C, uh, the producer, as well as just the guy who helps around and helps us further these broadcasts and kind of continue and elevate our game here at NCTV. Then myself, John Frieders, join alongside Henry Lapin. Thank you for joining us here. Rams come out victorious, eight to four, move to four, three and zero on the season, and West Hill moves to three and two on the year. Both teams. 